Okay, so from today we are starting a new playlist, or we can say a new series, which is known as, or which will be called as ICU Learnings. Now the reason for starting this is the long videos takes time, and usually we are able to upload once in a week a long lecture explaining certain things, and the shorts which we are uploading. They are of 60 seconds, so certain things uh, we need to uh, uh, say very fast in that, and we can't explain all the things in those 60 seconds. So, but there are certain things which we are learning or which we are observing in the IC on a daily basis, so which we need to share, which we want to share. So, it's this will be a casual series in which whatever we uh, discovered on that day, or whatever we saw that day, or whatever we got new inputs that day, and which you like to share with you all. So we'll be sharing then in a non-casual manner, like over a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or whenever we're sitting in the free times. So we'll be uh, recording that and sharing those inputs with you all so that we also, we, together we can learn more. So in that series, so today, today we'll be discussing two patients. So one patient was a young fellow who, who suffered an RT and was admitted in the ward and he was having long bone fracture, a femur fracture femur shaft fracture and then a call came to the ICU that the patient has, is desaturated and developed slight hypertension and then he was shifted to ICU. So whenever a long bone fracture patients develops desaturate uh, the session and uh, uh, develops hypertension you need to always think of two things one is either this is a fat embolism or either we are dealing a permo embolism because long bone fractures are very notorious for uh, uh, developing fat embolism and this can present with uh, desaturation and hypotension. So obviously we did a pulmonary angio uh, uh, for that. So pulmonary angio is actually the gold standard for diagnosing fat embolisms and uh, pul uh, uh, pulmonary embolisms though it was normal and other things by, by which you can look is doing an echocardiography in which we will, will see PA pressures increased on the right side of the heart and also RARV dilatation. In ECGs, you won't find a uh, clear-cut picture, but at times you can get right stain pattern sort of things and sinus tachycardia. So the point is, any long bone fracture which desaturates, always think of fat embolism and uh, think of PE because of the limb immobilizations. The chances are more when till the long bone fractures are fixed. Once it is fixed, it doesn't happen so frequently. So in our patient, it was not, uh, unfortunately, it was not both of them. It was due to uh, the patient was a COPD patient and there were lung contusions and there was a mild, uh, mild hemothorax because of lung fractures. So uh, secondly, regarding lung contusions also, lung contusion doesn't give you a problem on the same day. They starts to flare up on the third and fourth day. So any patient who is having even minimal lung contusion, you should always keep a watch on third and fourth day. If the patient is desaturating, there are chances that lung contusion are flaring up. So you need to give good physio and think. Con steroid role is controversial. So the learning points are any patient with long bone fractures, any desaturation, always think of pulmonary embolism and fat embolism. Lung contusions don't flare up on the first day. They give problem on the third and fourth day. So they need to be taken care of. So this was the fun was first patient. Second patient was a little bit interesting. This was a young lady who presented uh, with us with one or two days of uh, fever history and then presented with severe short, uh, shortness of breath. There was no previous comorbidities. But we did, when we did an ABG, we find that the pH was 6.9 and the bicarbs were 2. So it was hagma and severe metabolic acidosis. So it's very unusual for any patient with fever presenting with so much deranged metabolic panel means high lactate, severe metabolic acidosis, and one or two days of fever. So first, we thought of either it is some poisoning. We tried to rule out with the history, clinical examination, though we didn't get any clue. So it was, uh, it, we, are, we were sure that it's not poisoning in spite of inquiring all the things. But then uh, by the time investigations came, it turned out to be thrombocytopenia within one hour. And then uh, dengue NS1 was positive. So the patient was in dengue shock syndrome. So whenever a patient with fever or severe metabolic derangement and shock comes to you, always think of tropical diseases which can cause such metabolic derangements and dengue shock syndrome is one of them. It can present like that. Malaria also, uh, if it is endemic in your you should think of. So the learning point here is 
any fever with severe metabolic derangement which is not explained by anything else always think of your tropical diseases whether it's a uh, dengue strep typhus or malaria so that's all for today hope you like this new learnings icu learning series if you have any suggestion or comments do post in the comments or you can go to icu.in/forums see you next time thank you